I've got hacks for you. So be sure to pay attention to the very end because unlike me, at the very end of my life, this video will just keep getting better and better with a grand finale of bloopers. That's kind of dirty. Let me go. I'm going to go get Kitty some clean water. I'm going to stop yammering on and bring you hack number one. I can't believe this worked, but it worked. Hack number one is olive oil to clean your palate. Who knew? So what I did was I tried to rub it with just clear water and it just spread the paint around a little bit, but the stain did not budge. So I put some olive oil on a paper towel, rubbed it onto the plastic palette, and voila, clean, perfectly white, white palette. Let's move on to hack number two. Thank you, Krista Peterson, for giving me this really cool hack. Have you ever torn your paper? It's using a wet spoon to fix torn watercolor paper. Who knew? But I tried it and it worked. So if you tear your paper, and it gets that soft texture because the top layer that's kind of the harder surface is gone and then you it's left with that soft fuzzy surface then what what you do is you take a wet spoon and you press it onto your paper and then you let it dry and that soft fuzzy texture that happens when you tear your watercolor paper is gone and it looks just like regular non-torn watercolor paper so this actually worked too. Now, when you go to paint on this surface, it will not act, of course, like a watercolor paper with good sizing and all that because that's been torn away. But it's a good fix to do at the end of the painting to get that surface to look like the rest of the surface of the watercolor paper so it doesn't look like it has a tear in it. Don't leave. You're the star of the show. Have some more water. Bingo. All right, hack number three. This was left in my comments. G-O-S-I-A plumber and she told me about Charlie Hunter's channel and he was interviewing an artist who created almost all of her work with a squeegee. I haven't opened these yet. I haven't tried them yet. So let's give them a run and see what they do. I'm going to show you a painting that I worked on with a squeegee and this is my newest tutorial that I'm doing for my Patreon students. And as you can see, this horse has this really long mane. So it's perfect for using a squeegee to kind of stamp on the long strands. So I used a squeegee to stamp on the mane. You could also use this to make these birch trees. This makes beautiful birch trees by just going scrape and that makes a birch tree. <laughs> you can also use it to paint saplings and you can use it in abstract art by doing all sorts of creative things. You could put a bunch of dots of paint and then scrape them down and just see what kind of pattern they make. There's all kinds of ways to use a squeegee in a watercolor painting. So I would love to see what your artwork looks like on my Facebook group, Rachel Parker's Watercolor Workshop. Come find me. Oh, kitty, don't leave. She left. There you saw me just finishing off my painting with blowing some waves with my straw, but I really loved how this painting came out. It started just as an abstract and I saw waves and I put in a few little details to make it look more like a wave painting and voila, a fun little easy abstract painting. Thank you, squeegee. For hack number four, it's not really a hack. It's a new item organizational item that I am in love with. And I have been storing my watercolor paints in a very, very ugly fishing tackle box. It's like this hunter green and white and it's old and stained and it has a lot of fur in it. So it had to go. My new organizer is by Sorbus and it's a clear makeup organizer, but I am using it to store my paints and it holds so much stuff. It holds just as much, if not more than my tackle box did. And it looks a lot prettier sitting on my desk than that ugly fishing box. It has seven drawers and a bunch of little compartments on the top so you can store your brushes, you can store your paints, your erasers, and it's perfect for what I need to organize my painting supplies in a much more attractive way. I will put links to this makeup organizer and all my other favorite art supplies down below. So be sure to click on those. They are affiliate links so I get a little bit of compensation. Like for example, for every thousand dollars I sell, I found I make about 30 bucks. <laughs> That'll buy me lunch. Buy me lunch. Click on my affiliate link. Okay, now for hack number five, that this is a great way to make fur textures and grass textures. I didn't even put it in my grass video that I just made. 
but this tip comes to you from Paul Clark, who has a really great channel here on YouTube. He has sharpened the end of one of his paintbrushes. And then what he does is he paints as usual, and then he uses the tip of this paintbrush to scratch little grass textures into his painting. Now you could use this to scratch any kind of uh, texture that looks like this, like fur. This would be really great for fur or grass. So here I am using my little watercolor painting brush that was wood and I stuck the end in a pencil sharpener and got it nice and sharp and voila I have a scratching implement but you can also use other sharp objects uh, often the tip of a lot of paint brushes will have a chiseled end that you can use to scrape into your watercolor I have used a dental pick before for this purpose you can use uh, the tip of a dead ballpoint pen. There's lots of different things that you can use to scratch the surface of your paper to give it texture. For my next hack, this comes from Vivian Dubrell. Thank you so much for leaving this comment in my YouTube comments about masking. And I did a whole video on masking and I did not know about this. It's wetting your paper and putting on masking on wet paper. So I did a little experiment. I put masking on perfectly dry paper. I put masking on somewhat damp paper, and then I put masking fluid on completely wet paper. So of course, at each of those stages, you put on the masking, then you let everything dry. Then when everything is dry, including the masking, you paint over it, and then you let all of that completely dry, and then you remove the masking. This is the masking that was applied on very wet paper. And indeed, the edges are soft. They're kind of speckly. It's not straight, clean lines like when you apply the masking on dry paper. And I didn't notice much of a difference on the damp paper, but on the really wet paper where I applied masking, it had a speckled softer edge. So it was an interesting effect and it's definitely worth a try maybe in some landscapes or along the furry edge of an animal it might work. I should say that if you don't want any little speckles of paint to seep through your masking, then what I would say when you put the masking on wet paper, let it completely dry, let everything dry, and then put more masking over the part of the masking where you don't want any speckles or paint to get through because there's tiny little holes like pores where tiny little specks of paint will get through. So you have to put like two layers of masking, of course, not on the edges where you want this interesting effect. Hack number seven, you know how, how drippy watercolor paint is. So it's really easy to be painting along. You have this pristine painting and um, maybe you have a, it's a bigger piece and you have a lot of white space and you have to take a drippy brush across it. And if you drip on it, oh my gosh, it's just going to ruin it. If you are ever in that situation, what you can do is add a bunch of water to the area that you don't want to get any drips on it while you're painting. And then if you do make a mistake and drip into that large wet area, where you're not painting, it will just dissolve into the water and you won't be able to see it. So that's a great way to protect your paper from getting drips where you don't want them. Now in this particular painting, I wasn't just making one or two little drippy mistakes here and there. I was aggressively splashing paint to create the little spots for this Appy Full tutorial I'm doing for my Patreon students. This was still a great way to protect the background behind the full by having the paper wet everywhere around the full. I was able to easily sop up any spots that landed outside of the full so that I had a nice clean background to work on after the spots were done. For hack number eight, I was going to share a hack about using what used to be called dot bottles. Years ago, again, I was at a Tom Lynch workshop and one of the ways that he used to create trees was to use these little spray bottles that Holbein used to make. They're called dot bottles. And it was such a fun way to paint trees. So I hate that I can't find any. And I was doing some research and Lindy's Gang Magicals has spray bottles. And she tried to make those bottles where they kind of made a splat, but they didn't work the way that my old bottles used to work. So anyway, for hack number eight, I want to share another game changer that I added to my studio and that 
is these gel mats. They're gel foam mats that I put in front of my painting tables to stand on. And my feet get really sore and I like to be barefoot and I like to stand to paint. And so these have been great. I found these mats called New Life by Gel Pro in Target when I was just looking around and just bought them on a whim. But they're also available on Amazon, which I will link below. I highly recommend them and they have greatly extended the time I can comfortably paint without my feet getting sore. For hack number nine, let's talk about Brusho, which I just discovered. And it is so fun to play with. And I did showcase it a little bit in my last video about how to paint grass. So be sure to check out that video. I'll look it right up here. Okay, so this is Brusho. And this color is moss green, which I think is my favorite. And it's a powder and you sprinkle it on your paper. And then you can either spray it or you can sprinkle it onto wet paper. And it makes these really cool furry looking effects. I can also see it being uh, trees or foliage or grass. So I haven't learned how to control it, but it makes a big mess. It has fallow in it, obviously, because when you get it on your hands, it stains your hands for hours. And so you have to be really careful with it because it gets everywhere because it's a powder. But I painted this tree specifically for this hack video and it came out so well that I think I'll make it a real time Patreon tutorial that will be really short, easy and fun. So be sure to join me there if you wanna paint along with me as I explain in detail every step. I used a lot of my push technique to emphasize the cauliflower texture in this tree too. And there will be a lot of fun things to learn about in this upcoming tutorial. And I would love to see your paintings on my Rachel Parker watercolor workshop if you've used it successfully to create a really cool look in your paintings. For hack number 10, if you are one of my subscribers or my Patreon students, you know all about my love affair with this paint color. But otherwise, I am going to bring it to the wider world now officially. And that special paint color is Lamp Black. What makes Lamp Black so special? It has this unique characteristic of when you paint wet on wet with it, it creates fur effects. It's so cool. So if you watch my latest chick video, you will see what I mean when you paint on glistening level watercolor paper. By the way, I explain the difference between the different levels of moisture in paper in my calico cat tutorial that I posted here. And, and I will put a link here to that Calico cat tutorial. And at, at about minute 330, I explain the different uh, levels of paper moisture. So when you apply this lamp black paint to glistening paper, it furs out and it's so beautiful. And Yutaka Murakami uses this to a beautiful effect. Just look at these beautiful cat paintings that he's created using this effect. And also someone who really helped me a lot Check out her channel. She only has 500 subscribers and it's wrong. Bedorka, watercolors with Bedorka. And she uses this fur out technique a lot. And I really learned a lot from her. And I will link her here if I can. I'll also link her in the description. So I'll show you a couple paintings where I used this lamp black. And my best example is by far this chick painting. And look how there's like little strands of white fluff going out into the background. Uh, where I painted the, the lamp black right up to the edge of the chick. And then you just let it do its thing and it furs out like this. I have not found any other paint that furs out quite like this. Now you can get soft, beautiful effects with lots of different paints. But as far as it furring out with these little strands, these little rivulets, tiny rivulets that end up looking like little soft fluff or fur or beautiful glowing grass, Lamp Black is the only one I know, and my favorite Lamp Black is Daniel Smith Lamp Black. Winsor & Newton Lamp Black has more of a drying shift. A drying shift is where the paint lightens as it dries. Daniel Smith Lamp Black does not have anywhere near as big of a drying shift as it dries, so it stays nice and dramatic and dark. If you follow me on Patreon, you know that I've been painting this technique over and over again with Sadie. In fact, she's been helping me because of course she's perfect for this. She's black, she has long fur, and this is why I came upon this discovery. It's because of Sadie. So I should give Sadie her due credit. I never would have learned about Yutaka Murakami and this lamp black and this beautiful furring out effect of lamp black. And I have a black animal playlist. I have lots of different playlists. I got a lot of stuff, y'all. Check out my channel, you'll like it. <laughs>
All right, it's bonus time, and I'm going to share a secret with you guys that I have not shared on this channel yet. I left it out of the chick bay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but now I'm going to share it with you. There's one more thing that you have to do to get those beautiful furred out texture. First of all, you wait. You wait patiently for the paper to dry to the buckling stage. And then when it's just right, that's when you know when you start seeing this Arsh Cold Press 140 pound, by the way, to get these effects, you need to use good paper to get it to fur out to its maximum potential. Then you drip tiny bits of clear water, right, not right next, not in the margin right here, but kind of over here, drop tiny bits of clear water if you wanna push out the fur effect even more. Be sure to check out my push technique tutorial and in that, tutorial, I explain how you can use water to push paint little bits and not right here on the edge. You put the little drip of water here and let it push out that water, will push out into the black paint and create these beautiful furred out texture. And that's why his little tail became a tail <laughs> instead of uh, in the reference photo. He doesn't have this tail. And it's because I dropped my water a little bit too close to the edge and see that's what happens. It made this little tail here but it's a beautiful tail. It's a fluffed out tail. I like it. I left it. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Stop. Okay. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Um, we go. <laughs> Don't show them that end of yourself, Kitty. That's not your best side. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> and please leave me a comment. A Um, anyway, uh, gosh, focus. Okay. Focus. We, I don't know if I'm making sense, but I hope that makes sense though. There's that hack. You're welcome. <laughs> ah, okay. Did the viewers watch to the end? And, and if you guys do that, you will really help propel my channel to the next level. <laughs> it's really a win-win. So let's work together and do this. Come on. We can do this together. Huh? Right? Yeah. No, I look crazy. Okay. That with, um, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> or is it right up here? I'll look it right up here. I'll look it right up here. <laughs> that was better. <laughs> oh, be serious. Okay, you gotta hurry. Bye. Hi. Uh, That's your best work. Bye, everybody. <laughs>